Hey guys and welcome to Tech Talk with Gavin. Today we are going to be doing a review of Windows 8 as well as some of the features that came along with Windows 8, some that are like Windows 7, and others that make Windows 8 a very unique operating system and a big step forward for Microsoft. All right, and so basically we're going to go over some of the features that are different from Windows 7. All right. So basically we're going to go up into the upper right hand corner here and it's going to bring up this menu with a search with a search function, a share function, start button as well as devices and settings. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump into the search menu here. The search menu basically allows you to search through all your programs that are installed on your machine. Um, and it does it all right there and it's quite convenient. It has this little search bar which I thought was pretty awesome. All right, so basically we're going to go back to our desktop. Um, the way you would go back to your desktop is you're going to drag up into the upper left-hand corner here, the upper left-hand corner, and you'll see a little picture of your desktop up there, and go ahead and give that a click. And now we're back at our desktop, and basically what we are going to do is go back into that menu, and now we are going to look at the settings tab. Basically what the settings tab does is it has a link to your control panel, your personalization features, as well as your PC info where you'll find all your activation details and things to that nature. Um, the help center, there is also some Wi-Fi um, settings as well as your sound control, brightness control, notification center, as well as your power options where you will choose to shut down, restart, or hibernate your machine. Let's go ahead and click out of that by clicking right back on the desktop there. And now we're, let's go ahead and review our start menu. The start menu is what a lot of people were worried about with Windows 8. Um, they didn't know how smoothly it was actually going to work. So there's two different ways you can get into your start menu now. Um, you could just go ahead and go back to that menu um, in the upper right hand corner. Go down to the start button and give that a click and it will bring up your start menu just fine or you can drag into the lower left hand corner where the start button used to be that Microsoft has now removed um, and go ahead and give that a click. Okay, so we're in our start menu here. Um, this is the new applet style start menu. Basically, Microsoft decided to completely remodel the actual start menu. Uh, it now has, it now runs an applet style system it actually runs quite fast with this new applet style system. I was actually very impressed. In my opinion, it was a quite large step forward for Microsoft. So some of the apps that come preloaded with your machine are going to the mail app, the people app, the messaging app, um, as well as the calendar, uh, the photos app, the stocks app, weather, and the app store app, and et cetera. Okay. So basically what the mail app does is it's an email client where you can link all of your email accounts into one nice um, app right on your start menu. Uh, same goes with the messaging app. It is basically an IM system where you can link your MSN accounts and Facebook accounts um, to IM your friends on both MSN and Facebook. And another thing I would like to talk about would be the App Store. The App Store is where you will purchase all of your app style programs that are going that you're going to install on your Windows 8 machine. Uh, go ahead and click in there. It's nice and categorized and everything moves quite smooth and downloads very quickly. Another thing I would like to mention is that all your programs that you have purchased with like Windows 7 um, will install just about the same. You can still install programs right off the disk. It doesn't really matter. Um, I haven't really had any trouble installing Windows 7 programs. I've only had to run, I believe, two of them in compatibility mode, um, which wasn't that big of a deal. Once I installed them via compatibility mode, they worked great. Um, I had no problems there. So the cool thing about this start menu is it is completely scrollable. Uh, you can use the arrow keys. If you're a desktop user, you can use you, the arrow keys. Uh, the scroll ball on your mouse. If you're a touchscreen user, you can just go ahead and slide your finger across the screen. Works just as good. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go out of here by clicking on the desktop app. All right. So we're back at our desktop here. 
So as you can tell, Windows 8 does not look anything like Windows 7. Um, they reduced the arrow theme so it's not as evident, um, but it is still there. Uh, as far as the overall layout of the operating system, the actual interface is completely different, um, but it does in fact have some of the same features that Windows 7 did have. Um, like compatibility mode. Um, in order to get into compatibility mode, you just go ahead and give your uh, program that you want to run in compatibility mode a right click. You go down to properties. Go ahead and click on that. And once properties is open, you go to the compatibility tab. And this is where you'll be able to select what types of compatibility mode you can run your program in. Um, you can run the compatibility mode troubleshooter, which I actually found works quite well, a lot better than it did in Windows 7. And you can also choose to manually run it into a compatibility mode. You have a few choices here as far as Windows, it goes all the way back to Windows 95 and as current as Windows 7. And there's also a run as administrator deal on here. Um, we'll go ahead and exit out of that. Last but not least, I'd like to talk about IE10, um, which is the new version of Internet Explorer, which you can access here on your start menu. Um, this new version of Internet Explorer I was actually very, very impressed with. Um, it runs quite fast, and it doesn't take like uh, the old IEs used to take about, uh, about uh, 30 to 45 seconds to actually load and get on the page. Um, the IE10 actually runs very quickly and is up on the screen in roughly about 5 to 10 seconds and ready to browse. So I thought that was very neat. All right. Well, thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed that edition of Tech Talk with Gavin. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out a lot, and it helps promote my videos. Thank you, and have a very nice day.